Jim Simbola tells about a time in his church at the Brooklyn Tabernacle, Easter, 1992. He said they'd had all these great services and, and the, the church was just doing so well and it was just such a great day and they were having their last service and things were closing out and people were coming to the altar to pray and he was just kind of sitting at the, the steps of the altar just like if I were to sit down right here and just kind of soaking it all in, kind of unwinding. He said there was a man in the back, homeless, obviously homeless, no front teeth, and he said that he could tell that the guy wanted to come forward. And so Simbola looked at him. Now, he's in Brooklyn, and he said there are a lot of people like that that come to his church. And so he motioned for the guy to come forward. He said when the guy came forward, he almost threw up. Pastor Simbola almost threw up. He said the guy smelled so bad. He said, I, I've smelled bad-smelling street people before, but nothing like this. He said it was a mixture of alcohol and sweat and garbage and urine he said it was the grossest smell. Just to talk to the guy, he said, I had to turn my head, take a breath, and then look at him and just exhale and hold my breath while I was talking to him. He said it was just horrible. And he asked the guy, he said, what's your name? He said, David. He said, David, you live on the street? He said, yes. He said, how long you been on the street? He said, six years. He said, where'd you sleep last night? He said, an abandoned truck. And Simbola said, you know, I just kind of want to get rid of this guy. I can't believe that this is the way my Easter is going to end with this guy hitting me up for money. So he reached into his pocket to get some money, and the guy held out his finger and said, I don't want your money. He said, I'm going to die out on the street. He said, I want to know the Jesus that your choir was singing about. And he said, right then, Jim Simbola's heart just broke, and God convicted him for his pride, for his insensitivity, for him thinking to himself that this guy's not worthy of salvation. And he said, oh, God, have mercy on me, and oh, God, forgive me, and oh, God, cleanse me. And these are his words. He said, David, since the change in me, he moved toward me and fell on my chest, burying his grimy head against my white shirt and tie. He said, holding him close, I talked to him about the love of Jesus. These weren't just words. I felt them. I felt love for this pitiful young man. And that smell, I don't know how to explain it. It had almost made me sick, but now it became the most beautiful fragrance to me. I reveled in what had been repulsive just a moment ago. And the Lord seemed to say to me in that instance, Jim, if you and your wife have any value to me, if you have any purpose in my work, it has to do with this odor. This is the smell of the world I died for. Well, God just convicted his heart. Do I love people? Do I love this guy, David, even though he smells worse than anything I've ever smelled in my life? Am I willing to reach out my arms to him? 